Here's an example of a pendulum, and we can use a pendulum to look at things with simple harmonic motion, conservation of energy, Newton's laws, circular motion, and so a pendulum is a great way to review a lot of physics. And so we have a pendulum with a half meter length, and I've pulled it back 20 degrees from the vertical, and I'm going to release it from rest. Its mass is 2 kilograms, and we want to find the amplitude, the maximum velocity, maximum acceleration, period, frequency, angular frequency, and the maximum tension in the string. So we have our work cut out for us. Uh, some easy pickings here at first. The amplitude is just the maximum arc length. Sometimes we use theta as a proxy for the amplitude, but it's really the arc length. So you should be able to figure out what that is, right? It's what fraction of the total circumference. Imagine this pendulum going around in a circle. And so the circumference would be 2 pi times the radius, or 2 pi L. And then the fraction would be 20 degrees over 360 degrees. So the amplitude, 0.175 meters. And what about the maximum velocity? Well, we can get that from conservation of energy, right? The maximum velocity occurs down here at the bottom when all the energy is kinetic. And so V max, or the amplitude of the velocity, is at the bottom. And so the initial energy equals the final energy. That's easy enough. We know the mass, except that's going to cancel out, right? But we have a problem here. What is the height? And so we need to be able to figure out the initial height. And so we've seen this before. I'll give you a second to think about it or pause the video while you try and work it out. If you just watch me show you what it is, well, I've done that before, and that didn't work, did it? So pause. Okay, you're back, and I'm sure you figured out that if we draw a line here, we know this distance here, right? I've got a right triangle. The hypotenuse is L. So this distance here is L cosine theta. And the whole distance to the bottom is L. So H is going to be the difference between those two, L minus L cosine theta. So if you figured that out, congratulations. If not, come back to this again and see if you can figure it out on your own. And so the height is about 3 centimeters, 0.03 meters. And so now we can solve this for V max, and it's 0.77 meters per second. What about the maximum acceleration? Well, acceleration is a job for Newton's second law usually. So a free body diagram of the pendulum in this position. Why that position? That's where the maximum acceleration occurs. Uh, the restoring force is the greatest here at the place where it's got zero velocity, right? If it's oscillating back and forth, and we'll see later when we look at the force, it's, it's got to be the greatest force here too. And so I'm going to tip my coordinate system so that the x direction is in the direction of motion. That's the direction of the acceleration we use in simple harmonic motion, the tangential acceleration. You might be remembering centripetal acceleration. We'll look at that later. And so some of the forces in the x direction, all I have is the component of the weight that is perpendicular, um, that is in the direction of x direction of x. And it's opposite theta, right? This would be theta here. And so it would be mg sine theta is the component of the weight in the x direction. And that's the only force. So that equals ma. And so the acceleration is g sine theta for any point in the motion. But at this point, sine theta is the greatest at 20 degrees. Remember, it's 0 at 0 degrees. So that's got to be the maximum acceleration, 3.35. So if you just solved in general for the acceleration, you can see that it's going to be greatest when theta is greatest. And so we're checking these off one at a time here. And so the period, frequency, and angular frequency, those should be easy pickings if you know the equations. And so you should know the equation for period of a simple pendulum uh, is 2 pi square root of g over l. And in this case, g 9.8, l 0.5, so 1.42 seconds. And maybe you know the frequency equation. The frequency would be, would be 1 over 2 pi square root, square root of l over g. Either way, 
you can get whatever the other one is by doing the inverse. So frequency is 1 over the period, and period is 1 over the frequency. And so we get the frequency is 1 over 1.42, about 0.7 hertz. And angular frequency, remember, similar to angular speed. Change in angle over change in time was angular speed, 2 pi over the period. Angular frequency, very similar, um, 2 pi over the period still, 2 pi over 1.42 or 4.43 radians per second. You also could say it is 2 pi times the frequency. So either one of those would have worked. The angular frequency, if it's 2 pi times the frequency, for a pendulum is also square root of L over G. So you can get it that way too. All of those are fine. Maybe try all three. So we checked off those pretty quickly. If you know the equations, those are not too bad. How about maximum tension? Uh, that goes back to circular motion. We talked about rope swings. At the bottom, the rope has two jobs. It has to support the weight of the pendulum, and it needs a force upward to make it turn. And so the tension in the rope is greatest at the bottom when you're going the fastest and have to support all the weight. And so the maximum tension is at the bottom. So this free body diagram won't work. We need one at the bottom. And our coordinate system is still tangential and radial, except now we're interested in the y direction where the acceleration is. At the bottom, the tangential is 0, right? Because theta is 0 degrees, and so no tangential acceleration at the bottom. That agrees with simple harmonic motion too, right? No acceleration at the equilibrium position uh, in the direction of motion. So some of the forces in the y equals ma, but a is that special acceleration, centripetal acceleration, b squared over r, or omega squared r. Um, but we have linear speed up here, so let's go with this. And some of the forces would be tension in the direction of the acceleration, so it's positive, minus the weight is mv squared, and l is the radius. And so solving for tension, you can factor out the m if you want. And if you put in the numbers here, uh, 0.77 for V and 0.5 for L and 9.8 for G, 22 newtons, which is greater than the weight. And so uh, you have to watch that. Uh, the weight would be, what, 19.6 newtons. And so the tension greater than the weight, not equal to the weight, because there is acceleration in the radial or, or a centripetal direction, if you like. Now, some of you may be thinking, hey, wait a minute, I remember another way to get the maximum velocity. And with simple harmonic motion, there is another way. We found out that it's the angular frequency times the amplitude. And so we have angular frequency down here, and we figured out the amplitude here. And so you get the same answer out to this many digits, though. If you were to show another digit, you'd see there's a difference. This is approximate. This is only true when this equation is true, and that means when uh, theta is small, 20 degrees or less or so. There's no certain def definite position. Same with acceleration. We had another equation for the maximum acceleration. Let's erase stuff here. And so the maximum acceleration was the angular frequency squared times the amplitude, and you get 3.42. Notice now there is a noticeable difference. And so at 20 degrees, we're pushing the small angle approximation. Uh, if they told you this was a simple pendulum, then you could use these. Otherwise, you know, I think you learn more physics by going through it this way. Uh, but both are good. Uh, give this one a try. Uh, what would happen if theta was 30 degrees? You're going to see a bigger difference between these two and these two. What if it was 10 degrees? Then this might be different. So give this one a try. See if you can do an example on your own.